You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's House of Lies After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's House of Lies After Show. That's right. Oh, the hurts. <laughs> oh, it hurts. It hurts. Oh, right here. That's right, guys. We love the way you lie because this is the first ever After Buzz show of House of Lies. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. Only took us two, three seasons to, you know, get it going, but exactly. we are here. Popular demand. Yes. We are here uh, for the first episode called Wreckage. And I am your host, Roya Tahari. Joining me on this panel, guys, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Yell. And I am Lim Gonzalez, representing the male again counterpart, and I love it all the time, every time. <laughs> yeah, you just seems to get stuck on a panel full right. of women. It's all know? good. Yeah. It's all good. It's because <laughs> you know quality TV. Right, right. Ooh. Good point. Exactly. Valid point. Right? <laughs> I know quality TV. Speaking of quality TV, let's just jump right. Oh, actually, no, we shouldn't jump right into this episode. We should really talk about, you know, the past two seasons because we haven't done an after show for it yet. So overall, basically, second season, um, we were left hanging with um, Clyde. He rats out the whole um, Marty leaving the show, mm. or just leaving the show, leaving the company. It was right. a show. It was, yeah. it was, <laughs> it was a, a shit show, that's <laughs> for sure. Yep. Um, and then that leads to, um, sorry, you guys, I'm drawing a blank on a lot of stuff that just happened. There's just so much going on. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but, you have, yeah, you have, you have, uh, you know, Marty leaving. I mean, it just kind of picked up where it left off. You had yeah. Marty leaving uh, the industry he was with. Um, Jeannie then, was left. Right, exactly. Jeannie's left. Uh, and so is Doug. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, our boy Go Clyde, ahead. who's over at his ex-wife's. Uh, spot which is leaves a lot of drama yep. because at the end of that, you know, they basically kind of uh, mixed up accounts and got her that account. Mm -hmm. So it just left a lot of drama. So it basically picked up right where everything left off, kind of showed everybody where it's at. So it's it's interesting, and especially I know we're going to get into this, but this whole love interest with um, you know Jeannie and Marty, yeah, and mm -hmm. just kind of where that left off us hanging. Are, are they going to get together? Is she going to work where he's at? Is new yep. firm kind of associates? How's this going to play out? And it, it starts off. Off with this dream sequence. Yeah. And I wonder if we're going to see Doug's wife and if they are still married because yes. in this yeah. episode they never really mentioned or at brought all. her up at all. Yeah. At all. So we'll see the lady from San Diego. Mm -hmm. I remember her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just jump into the dream sequence that Marty's having. You yes. know, he walks into his office, he sees uh, Doug and Clyde, and they're just like, hey. And then he sees Jeannie in his office. Mm -hmm. And she's like, how did you get in here? Mm -hmm. And then she sits on the desk and she's like, I, I'm here. You're here with me. And then mm -hmm. it turns into chaos. Right. Well, before the chaos. They were about to go at it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's I just want that noted. Yes. <laughs> Before it turned into chaos, it was turning into something beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, Jeannie's looking great in this season. Oh yeah. We, last season we didn't really get to see much of her because she was pregnant, the mm -hmm. actress, um, the entire season mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. She was glowing the entire time. So now she's finally able to show off and mm -hmm. be the sexy self that she is, yep. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, and then this dream turns, you know, it's turbulence because he's on a plane. Right. But do you think that symbolizes how his life is going? How without her, she kind of keeps him calm? I think it, it, it definitely is his fear of being without her. Um, I think we see that he needs her, even though he's not going to admit it out loud. Yeah. But his subconscious knows that he needs her and that without her, uh, con associates could easily fall apart, yeah. easily just crumble. Well, I think a lot of it, too, is not only are they... And, you know, together, like, he loves her. I, I really think he loves her. Uh, and I love using that word, love, <laughs> just so you know. So everybody loves everybody. But anyway, I, th I really think he loves her. Um, she loves him as well. She obviously displayed that right. in the previous episode when the season ended. But I think more so, she's great at what she does. And that's another reason why he really wanted her because of her skill and ability, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and I think a lot of that, you know, that dream sequence was foreshadowing of what will happen personally if she's not there. 
you know, because everything was kind of crumbling around yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And if she's not in his life or not with him in his company, then everything's going to go to waste. And I think that's why, you know, he's is where he is and why he's thinking those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really hope that they finally somehow connect uh, together. I don't They just have this chemistry together. I just love mm -hmm. it. And my chair keeps squeaking as I keep moving. Sorry, I was trying to refrain from doing that. Uh, but I sorry, I didn't mean to skip you out, Marissa. Marissa is joining us as our engineer over here. Yay, Marissa! Hello. <laughs> Yay. Hello, so feel free to pipe in if you ever want. Up to you. Um, but let's go ahead and you know start talking about the pods because the, the original pod they're broken up. They're yeah. not right. together anymore. Right, Dream Team's gone. Yes. So isn't it interesting how they all are very similar? Yes. They all yes. have like different characteristics of every, the original pod. Oh right. yeah. Um, they got Caitlin, who's the new girl. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Jeffrey, who I feel like he's supposed to be the Doug. But then we've got William, who got the, like, looks of Clyde, but is, like, personality of Doug. Uh -huh. yeah. It's just really interesting to see this new group kind of trying to be the old group. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where that goes. It's interesting that uh, William is from Monica's mm -hmm. original pod. From Kenzie. Uh -huh. Kensley. And, yeah. And yet he's kind of scared. Mm -hmm. But he seems like he's that strong character that's going to try and become, you know, the head of the... Oh, yeah. Right. Be, uh, what are they called? President? No. Right? Partner. Partner is Partner. the word I'm looking for. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> I'm just going to throw out random words. Right. And then it's going to somehow match up it's with what I'm trying to get It's going to make yeah. sense. Cat. Meow. It works. Right. You know? so, right. Love. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, their pod is really interesting. I don't know. They're kind of dull. Which is unique yeah. for Marty to find a doll. Maybe he doesn't want to replace. You're talking his about Marty. Yeah, Marty's this was pod? Marty's pod. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, he. Well, I think this is what he has. I mean, it doesn't tell where they came from, aside from the William, one that yeah. did come from um, Kinsley. But I think that he try. He wants to basically have his old pod back. Yeah. Um, in theory, but I think that. You know, it's kind of hard to replace somebody, you know, um, when when somebody else is gone. I mean, it's kind of hard to get what you used to have. And so I think he maybe sees some potential in them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as their characters develop, there may be some backstories and, and may kind of come out about how they are. Because as you saw in the plane ride, they were kind of complaining. And, yeah. you know, I thought this was going to be better and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. But um, I think ultimately he picked them for a reason. So, um, but of course he has that spot, you know, for yeah. Dear Jeannie. But so I, waiting for it to come back. I agree, though, that um, they're kind of dull because I think back to the first episode when we first met the pod to begin with, mm -hmm. and they were just such interesting characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and True. I think that they are a little bit. Um, maybe it's because they're shy and they're new mm -hmm. around Marty. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to see them blossom and grow. Right. I really want to see it. Yeah, one of them even made a comment about how it's a startup company and they thought mm -hmm. it would be a lot more. Right. Well, if it's a right. lot more, why aren't you guys trying? Like, so yeah. maybe it's Give been a while and it's still kind of duds, like the companies that they keep going after are duds. Uh -huh. So maybe that's the history, like you said, we haven't really seen Could where be. they came from. Mm -hmm. So maybe that will come up mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. Uh, but what about uh, Genie's pod? What do you guys think of that? I think Genie's pod is kind of gangster. Yeah. Like, I, I, I <laughs> like her pod. Like, I do. I mean, I think... Again, I think it, it is very, excuse me, synonymous of of the other pod that they had with kind of the same type of characters, not as prevalent, right? But at the same time, you know, very you know, quick witted, smart. Definitely think they can do the job. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see Jeannie as a leader because um, you didn't really see that before because she always played the background she's under Marty. She's been a leader though, in a you subtle think so, way. She's though? oh yeah, she's been definitely trying to take the lead of the pod underneath Marty. Right. Uh, with the whole trying to have Marty go off on his own branch in season mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. she definitely was taking the lead of being his sidekick. It was his sidekick, true, but she took the lead out of the pod, the okay. original pod. Okay. So I feel she. You're does talking have about that. before she got her promotion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, this is season two. So yeah, she yeah. already got the. Oh, you mean? For season three? Before when she that got promotion? the promotion. Well, she got it in season two. It was like the fake promotion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was at the start of it. Yeah. Right. Totally that was after she exactly. did the yeah. skipper or whatever his right, name was, exactly. right? Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> the fake promotion. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, I'm talking about when Marty was secretly trying to branch out. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, she okay. kind of took charge of that whole thing. He would ask her to do this. He right, do that, and right. She did. And While she did. he was able to, yeah. so he could do mm -hmm. what he needed yeah. to do. Yeah. And he was gotcha. dealing with uh, Tamara. Was that her name at the. Yeah, his. the girl from his B school. Yeah. Oh, yes. BS school yes. Or yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> I'm uh, really excited to see Jeannie working with another woman and working well with her because so far when she interacts with women, she's not very... She's threatened by them. Yeah. yeah. And I'm really excited to see her with Benita. 
Maybe that's why they chose her. Maybe that's she chose a Sasquatch. She, <laughs> she <laughs> said that Benita is the best analyst. That's true. Well, maybe. I don't know. But I love how JC is the religious one and JC is short for Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, just that is interesting. Little, little, yeah. And he's got a chastity valley with his yes. girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> so nice. He's a little bit of a pervert for sure. The way he was well, saying lines as he walked in and he was checking out uh, Jeannie's ass. And that's the thing that's interesting because, like you said, he has the name JC. He's mm-hmm. this Christian, but then he has this alter ego or whatever you want to yeah. call it where he's kind of raunchy. So well, how does that kind of go? What do you think about that? I, I definitely believe that that's because he's trying to he's trying to be this, you know, chaste, uh, virtuous so he's person. Suppressing yeah, he's suppressing his, his, his natural manly ah, urges. Yeah, so it's like the Jekyll and Hyde. It's my personal belief that yeah. that's what's happening happening there Could unlike right. Clyde who is right. going on to his pod who right. was being <laughs> later accused as a alleged rapist right. Right. you know he was right. acquitted <laughs> yes he was yes. acquitted yes, yes. yes. <laughs> with his gang and that was a they're weird hit that gang that pod can He's, we talk about um Everett yeah what's up with Everett? I don't so know weird. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with him it, it was I didn't know I didn't understand his character I couldn't there was no Doug there was no Clyde there was right. no Jeannie it mm-hmm. was just that kid he was <laughs> do you know what like, I mean right yeah. he was just was, in, in left field yeah he seemed like he was slow yeah and like he just like his one liners like you should do that later like it was yeah. just like robotic you were a kicker right like I didn't understand <laughs> <Shit>. like, <laughs> it was almost like bad acting but I get I mean I mean I well, think it'll come up later Maybe you know as the character develops, but he just seems really. I hope off. it was bad. I, I, think, I think. I hope it was. I think the character is supposed to be this weirdo. Yeah, I, that's, I think, yeah. Well, I think I think you're right. Is it that's to make Clyde said. look really good out of the whole pod? Maybe. Maybe. I guess. I don't yeah. Because yeah. if you think about Clyde, really didn't do much. Even though, yeah, he sabotaged the he whole was thing. He was yeah. a big talker. Mm-hmm. He got nothing. He just got put back into another pod right. at the bottom. It looks like he's got his own little office, though. It's kind of got doors away from right. those freaks, but still, right. it's just kind of. It, it, he didn't really get anything out of it. Out of that whole, he messed up the relationship with Jeannie and Marty mm-hmm. by well, his sabotage. And he, he he was uh, well. He he wanted to get more. He thought yeah. by doing that he would get more. But now he's got this boss that's a tyrant, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Monica, and so <laughs> Monica. dealing with her. But I think part of it was to get back at um, Marty. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Definitely. And knowing that, I don't think he would have done it if it was Marty's ex. Honestly. Uh, if it was a different opportunity, I think he might have stayed. But because it was Marty's ex, it was a way for him to get back at Marty um, for, you know, being the person he was. And at the same time, he can make, make this move oh, definitely, and see if that'll yeah. happen. So, um, but I think it's going to be interesting. I think, honestly, I don't think he's going to stay. Yeah, I definitely I mean, we're not in predictions so. yet, but I, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Do you think there's a relationship between Christy and Monica? Because you remember she did have Monica did have a oh, lesbian rea- right. uh, mm. interaction with her uh, nanny the, or whatever is that the was. New girl that's, uh, is the, the kiss up. You she's know? beautiful. She's kind of like a Doug. She's I, beautiful. I'll just say that off top. Like she's Monica really, or Christy? No, Christy. Oh, okay. Christy. Yeah. The subtle beauty. Yeah, okay. she's very. I mean, she, you know, she just has a nice demure, nice attractiveness to her. Um, so you want to see a sex scene? Is what you're trying to say? No, no. <laughs> with <laughs> Monica? No. <laughs> It's not what I'm saying. I would, I just, I would like to see a yes. sex scene with Monica, Christy and Monica. I think that would be amazing. My girls would like to see it. I just was pointing out that she was attractive. That's all. Uh. Just, she's nice to look at. That's it. You know, okay. I mean, and of course, you know, Clyde was getting at her, but he would get at a stick. You know what I'm saying? He, he would, would that's get at true. He, he would, right? Yeah. He would if he thought he had a chance. So I mean, I don't know if that speaks yeah. much volume, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole relationship between Clyde and her, it's kind of funny. I, I wanted to see if it would work with him trying to hit on her. Mm-hmm. But apparently something sw- like she'll do whatever Monica says. Right. Right. And I, that's, and I love how Monica knows that Clyde is, is powerful in that pod. Mm-hmm. So she tries to sabotage him by telling those other. Oh, yeah. Things. And I, by the way, her yelling at the people out in the hallway. Yes. Uh, before she went to the charity for kids or right. animals or something <laughs> or genocide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Genocide. <laughs> it was just I love Monica and her craziness even though she pisses me off most of the time I still love her craziness I, I don't like her really I don't I, no. I hated I, her the first yeah. season yeah yeah second season she turned it around for me because she tried with Roscoe and she but then she had she some flipped. shining she had some shining moments yeah. she did but I think overall and and it confirms because when it th- I was like ah oh, I think she's kind of playing it and then you see her in this season mm-hmm. out the gate being, you know, the crazy person that she is, yeah. the tyrant. So I don't know. I, I, I really don't like her. Um, I, 
you know, I don't know if I'll like her later. Uh, she's going to be on our show next week, so we better change. No, I'm just kidding. It's going to make you feel really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I um, I really didn't like her the first season. I didn't I didn't like her the second season. Really? But seeing her at work, I really like that Monica. Yeah? Because yeah. I, I don't know why in the past, like, seeing her be crazy with uh, with Marty and, and in her personal life, yeah. mm -hmm. I was like, well... I don't like her because she's, you know, ruining Marty's life and right. she's trying to take his kid and she's right. crazy. Mm -hmm. But seeing her in the office shout at people, that mm -hmm. is hilarious. <laughs> I don't know Unless why. Unless you're one of those people, then it's probably Maybe not. Maybe it's because yeah. I'm not one of yeah. those people. I, I liked Monica in her vegan stage. She was nice. <laughs> yeah. She was down to earth, you know? And, and then she, she, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and then so she got annoying. back on the coke right. and then she just right. went boop. Right. And yeah, she's single and uh, my chair just squeaked again. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, and I'm gonna stop spinning, guys. I yeah. need to stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the kitchen scene where Marty comes home from. Where they were like in Tokyo or somewhere in. Mm -hmm. Which, they by the way, mm -hmm. Bobby. Oh yeah, because they were going for the uh, the free range food free -range with foods. Bobby. Mm -hmm. That's the character's name, which Correct. is also Marv Merchants from Home Alone, guys. Mm -hmm. One of the yes. robbers. I don't yes. know if anyone caught on to that from yes. that little yeah. segment. We but did see that. Yes, mm -hmm. I was really excited. I was hoping he was going to slip, <laughs> but he didn't. So that's good for him. No bowling balls on his head. So right. that's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he was going out there to get that um, free range group, mm -hmm. and it worked. He got mm -hmm. it. And then he comes home, and Roscoe and him are talking about basketball tryouts. Mm -hmm. yep. Which, by the way, in this entire sequence, I loved how they added the basketball sound effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. The invisible yes. bouncing yes. of the ball or the yes. swoosh of the net. It, the, it was, the block? Yeah, they didn't need to do that, so I wonder if the editors were just like, I wonder what this what one looked look like. like. And, and it added a lot to it. It really did. I felt like the first time I saw it, I was like, am I, do I hear those yeah. sounds? <laughs> <laughs> those sounds really right? there? Yeah, the whole style, it's kind of like you're in Marty's head in a way, too. Right. Mm -hmm. And when he looks at the camera, right. it's just his conscious talking to you or whatever, it. subconscious. But, yeah, so he talks about, Roscoe brings up the fact of Jeannie and how he would mm -hmm. love for Jeannie to be by his side. Mm -hmm. And then the dad, uh, the grandpa comes in and he starts right. talking about Jeannie and mm -hmm. how, oh, you right. missed her, too. And this shuts Marty up a little bit. It kind of takes him away from the... I really like this scene. I really like this scene. And I think it just, it not only shows basically like his softer side because you know he has to put on this especially now that he's a, he's a boss boss mm -hmm. he has to always put on this front exterior and he kind of hides behind that i think just as a character as a whole not showing emotion or acting like he doesn't care when he really does and so his family family is always going to know your real side mm -hmm. and so you have his son and his dad so both aspects of his life that live with him and can really just basically relate to him and say look you you really like her you miss her you know all of these different things and I think that's good and I think that's going to be the driving force to probably get him you know what I'm saying because if you think about it we looked later on in scene what does he do he shows up in the limo mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying this is after the discussion with his yeah. son and his dad so for whatever reason he wanted to obviously he wants her back you know as, as, a, as an employee but at the same time we all know how he feel feels about it mm -hmm. he just doesn't know how to say it yeah yeah and it's I, I love when the grandpa, the uh, Marty's dad's in the shot. Or like he's just such a great character, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of curious if in the season they're gonna bring up his whole Parkinson's thing. Again. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, my dad has Parkinson's, so I know that it's not gonna be like an extreme. Oh, one month and then he's of uh, side effects. I mean, medication. Right. He, they brought that up in season mm -hmm. two, I believe, or mm -hmm. season one. Season was it two? I think. I think it was season two. Season two when he finds yeah. the medication mm -hmm. and right. then he gets in a car accident. So mm -hmm. there is little subtle things that could come back in season three. But we'll see. Hopefully they don't kill him off with something stupid. I I would hate that. Yeah, because he's, he's just a great character. If that happens, Marty's going to go down a dark, dark, dark hole. Oh, he'll, yeah, it's going to be This is going to be like Monica times a gajillion. It's you know? gonna <laughs> like, <laughs> we won't see it's that for at bad. least another two seasons. Okay, good, yeah. Yeah. good, good. All right, thank you. Yeah. 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 Ooh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. You saved me from that. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you hear Roscoe's uh, bass in his voice now? Oh, yeah, yeah. and his up? height's getting a little taller, right, too. Yeah. Right. I wonder if they're going to keep him as his little transgender kind of character yeah i noticed that well in the scene of he's playing basketball yeah. so it's more masculine mm -hmm. looking and and masculine feeling so i'm wondering if they're going to tap back into that i heard a rumor Ooh, do you want to tell us now or do you want to wait or you want to i want to tell us do now. it do it uh rumor is that roscoe has a girlfriend this season oh. what? like a girlfriend or a like Hey, girlfriend. Yes. Kind of a girlfriend. <laughs> like a relationship with a girl. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> when I say a girlfriend, I mean a girlfriend. Well, girlfriend. in the first season, he wanted a girlfriend and a boyfriend. Yeah, I think, I think, 
I think uh, Roscoe's gender fluidity is going to become a huge uh, deal and going to be very interesting and very exciting to watch. Oh, you cool. think they're going to really, really look into that development? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sweet. That sounds good. I mean, he is, he's going through puberty. Right. Emotions <laughs> right. right. are rage. Now okay. is the time to... <laughs> Now's the time to do it. Yeah, to fluidize your gender. Right. <laughs> That's a word. That's, okay. That's a word. All right. Fluidize. Well, now with the scene with um, Jeannie coming out on her porch... By mm -hmm. the way, that scene, just that clip, remind me of Never Been Kissed, mm -hmm. right before uh, Drew Barrymore gets egged, yes. you know, <laughs> and the scene before, afterwards, and she doesn't get egged. So the right. same, same style. And then when they cut to Marty at the limo, mm -hmm. remind me of Sixteen Candles, mm -hmm. when uh, the boy was standing by the car. She just got that amazed look. Right. You know, I'm sure they all kind of relate to each other in some sure. way. But <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> that's I, what I thought I when I first it. saw that. I was like... Mm -hmm. Never been kissed. Oh, 16 candles. Right. Marty's there. It kind of like went in a weird transition in my head. Anyways, that's right. how I thought. <laughs> awesome. But what did you guys, what was your reaction? Yeah, I just told you mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I liked it um, because, as again, we're talking about love. Um, my favorite subject. I think that they need to be together. And, of course, in order for it to have the drama for the show that it needs to have, there's going to be this tug of war with emotions and feelings and just happens to have to happen. But ultimately, I think that um, it was a great gesture on Marty's part to kind of show her, because she, she put herself out there last season. At the end of last season, she said, I love you. You know, she just put it all on the table, mm -hmm. and it was up to him to be like, I love you back, or I don't, or whatever. And he just kind of him awed to the point where he just kind of danced around it and then left her hanging. He she said, was devastating. Jesus, Jeannie. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. She's like, Jesus, school, Jeannie. School girl crush. That's right. what he called it, too. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to slap him in that scene. <laughs> I was like, Jeannie, just slap him. Put your hand up and go whack, right. you know? Well, He's going to be this. leaving. He's not going to be your boss. Exactly, Come on. exactly. So I think that it's a good gesture. I mean, in his Marty way, if mm -hmm. I can say it that way, to kind of show good faith and say, even though... He's wrapping it around business and disguising it. Well, I got some inside information for you. You don't want to drive drunk. Da, mm -hmm. da, da, da. But um, I think it was good for him to do that. And I think we're going to see more of that. Um, and who knows? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So he was telling about Colossal Foods and mm -hmm. because he has Food Corp. And then that would lead to a whole monopoly kind of style-ish. I just don't think you're allowed to have both. Well, yeah, it's pretty sure it's illegal. But well, I mean, they're not both. As long as she stays with uh, her company. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's kind of an interesting take on it. Sure. Which I'm sure he probably would have wanted to do with his wife mm -hmm. if he could. But right. she's crazy. Right. Bat shit crazy. Right. You know. <laughs> I mean, he, he had a choice to go to Clyde with this. But he decided to go mm, with Jeannie. But Clyde backstabbed him. That's yeah, a whole new relationship that's going to take some time to heal, I feel. Right. I'm just saying that he had, I mean, business-wise, he had, he had a choice. And he chose Jeannie. I don't, I don't think he really had a choice. All right. I take I, I it see, back. I see what you're saying. No, no, no. I see what you're saying. But Clyde is with his, his wife, his ex-wife. Right. So he already hates her. So I don't think he would help his ex-wife become better. No. Or no. kind of keep it together. No. I, I feel like he could have. I feel like he could have. Well, taken and plus it she already her. had it. She already had it. Right. But he could have taken it, done the deal yeah. with her, and then eventually stabbed her in the back. Mm. I just think that's, that's a Marty thing to do. Yeah, but I think he's 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 changing. He's changing. Because he's in love. Well, because yeah. <laughs> yes. L O V E love <laughs> this guy. I'm telling you, I, I really watch. We'll see as the season progresses. I mean, we're probably going to get in predictions now, but I think that he's he's still Marty. But at the same time, I don't think he's all about the backstabbing. I think he's just about winning. You know mm. what I'm saying? And when he, you know, talks to Jeannie and he's like, I'll give you this account. I have that account. Yeah, we'll have to work it out. But let's keep the monopoly. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I mean, he could have done some things to his ex-wife, but he didn't. He chose not to. Right. Just your example right there. Right. Love. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I, I just don't think that's that would be Marty's tact. Right. Beads. I can backstab you because I'm going to backstab you. I right. think it, he always. When he does it, he does it because the opportunity presents itself uh -huh. versus him creating the opportunity. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Or am yes. I going crazy? No, that makes sense. No, you're not, Monica. No, okay. you're no, not Monica. Monica. You're not Monica. Okay. <laughs> Good. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, let's just go ahead and uh, jump into our predictions. predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. I love this music. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to do the whole season or do you guys want to do your predictions for next week's episode? Um, I'm going to do, I want to do both. Both? Okay. Yes. 
Start so, it off. I'll decide. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so for next uh, episode, I believe that um, Jeannie is going to start getting closer to Marty. And I don't, I'm not going to say that she's going to, you know, jump on board yet, but I definitely think she's going to start moving in that direction, you know, and being part of him. I think that their relationship is going to change and it's going to come to where they're going to be closer together. Um, I think that uh, with Monica and her pod, um, I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, with uh, Clyde, I think there's going to be some dissension there um, because I think he's going to be trying to figure out what he's trying to do. Um, you know, as far as if he wants to leave or if he wants to stay, because I really don't think he's going to be able to get along with Monica. I think he kind of overestimated that. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I will say for the season, I think that definitely Marty and Jeannie are going to come together and they're going to turn into this power couple. And I think they're going to kind of take over the world in the sense of that marketing, mm -hmm. you know, type situation. And then I think the other firms, it's going to be them trying to, you know, bit them against each other and trying to get on top of them. Um, but that's really for the season. Um, I think they're going to get together. And I think that um, all of them are going to get back together eventually for as far as the season goes. All of them. Why? Because of love. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, all right. Here's what I got. I think by the end of next episode, someone will come, somebody from the original pod will join Khan Associates. Um, and I think that this, okay. <laughs> I think that Clyde and Monica at some point this season will sleep together. I think that Doug and Benita at some point this season will sleep together. Without the wife? Yeah. I think he's going to get drunk, cheat on his wife with Benita. Yeah. And I think that Marty will eventually, by the end of the season, realize that he does love Jeannie. Yes. Okay. Those, I like it. Those I like are my it. theories. I cannot wait for those to happen. Huh. I definitely agree with you guys. I'm going to have to say William, you know, in Marty's pod is going to be a snake because he came from Monica. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I feel he's going to do something to kind of, if Clyde leaves that pod uh -huh. of Monica, William's going to do something where Monica is going to try and get him back, mm -hmm. okay. but not really keep him. It's right. just for her own benefit, you know, mm -hmm. like chess. Yeah. So I think he's going to do something really evil, not evil, but help Monica out hmm. and screw Marty over. Okay. Uh, definitely think the pod is going to regroup itself slowly. First is going to go to Jeannie. They're going to all regroup there. And mm. then they're going to hopefully mm. make their way over to Marty. At Probably at the end of the season, they'll be rejoined. Or there'll be a power, like, um, two duos. I don't know. Jeannie's going to be on her. I, <laughs> I just want Jeannie and Marty to get, get to it already, you know? Mm. <laughs> get to it yes perfect well guys don't forget download this um on itunes it's free and yes. rate us leave us some comments and Please. let us know what we can do and if you guys have a idea for the opening song let us know we'll do it different every time because house of lies doesn't really have a theme song mm -mm. you know it's got mm -mm. a little twinkle here and there but yeah. that's about it a little banjo yeah that's it. <laughs> exactly <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so guys you can find me on twitter at hey roya and i'm also on instagram same uh handle hey roya where can we find you guys? Uh, you can find me online at www.yell.tv. That's Y-A-E-L.tv. And on Twitter at Yell Teagle, Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. Sorry about all the letters. Do you yell a lot? I do. I'm very loud. <laughs> That's so real, loud. real clever. Never heard that Thanks. before. <laughs> but I'm <sh> <laughs> You can find me uh, at The Poet Saint on Twitter and on Instagram all day, every day. Cool, guys. Thank you so much for watching the first ever of House of Lies. Yay. Yeah, first ever history. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>